Hello. Hold on. Hello. 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 Welcome to Socks Addicts Podcast. Hello. It is St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Today we do have a special guest, the pride of High Park, Minnie Del Carmen, and I'm going to bring him in right now. Woo. Hello, guys. Hello. Yay. Awesome. Happy I love the green beer. I love Great. that. That's what I needed. I'm Dominican, but yeah. I turn Irish for at least one day. So. Oh, yeah. Irish. Oh, oh, perfect. Coming. Yeah, for today. So. Well, thank you guys for having me. This is awesome. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. Yay. So here. glad you could join thank us. You. Yeah. Thank, thank you for you being do. here. I'm very, um, I want to, you know, looking forward to hearing about Boston Athletic Academy and all of that. Um, so um, really, I I know you're asked this like a lot, I'm sure. Um, but growing up, you know, so close to Fenway Park and playing at all the ballparks around there, to me, that is like a fairy tale thing that happened that you became a Red Sox later on in life. And then World Series 2007. So what was what is that experience like? Um, it's it's been a it's been a great journey. Um, like you said, being the local kid from the city, uh, not too many kids come out of the city. So I was I remember in my time it was about I was the first kid in forty years to get drafted out of out of high school out of the city, and actually a few to make it to the big league. So you know I take pride in that, and as you mentioned, that pride at High Park, you know that that touches me here because people still call me the HB kid, which is great. Um, yeah. But yeah, just like anybody else, you know, dream like the dream. My dream was to make it with the Red Sox, and uh, you know, so the stuff that we try to teach our kids today, you know, obviously academics are very important to what we're trying to do in the city right now. But I'll get into that. Um, but for me, it was just we were a baseball family. Uh, my dad played with the Phillies in the '70s. Um, never made it to the big leagues. Uh, I don't know how we ended up in Boston, to be honest with you. But my sister was born in Virginia, and me and my brother here in the city of Boston. So. You know, I'm glad he did because, uh, you know, I took Red Sox, uh, you know, Boston zone and, you know, going to Fenway as a kid growing up, like you said. And and, and I did play in every every park in the city, which is awesome. Um, and, you know, just to be able to wear that Red Sox uniform as a local boy from the city and actually make it. Uh, and in those times, you know, there was, you know, the streets and drugs and a lot of violence in the city. But, you know, I was putting myself around the right group of friends which I still have those five friends today that are, we're best friends. We all have kids now. They all come to the to the academy, and and we get to hang out a little bit more and see our kids grow up, which is awesome. And uh, so that's the message that I'm trying to give now is just really have uh, a place for kids in the city to call a second home, you know, and know that it's that the doors are open, whether it's for baseball or just their academics or just a place to come hang out just because uh, it's so easy to get distracted and – get pulled into the streets and you know i think we need more places like what i'm trying to do right now definitely that is a beautiful thing for sure um i want to thank bob connors my friend who like connected us but <laughs> he's awesome. oh, yeah. he's, he's um, a good guy yeah he's a great guy and um and he told me about the, all of that and i was like okay i definitely want to have them on to to talk about that because that is a beautiful thing for somebody who something has been given to has been blessed to give back is a it's it's a miracle these days a lot of there aren't a lot of generous people like there should be and so i applaud you for that no thank yes. you and uh just to give bob connors a shout out i mean he <laughs> met him a few years ago in fantasy camp i mean i've met a lot of great guys down there uh they love what i'm doing they love the passion that i have for these kids in the inner city uh, and we're a nonprofit, so you know we try to give back as much as we can, you know, just to get the kids out of the city, because their, their generation is so used to their own little bubble. Like to me, it doesn't matter what part of you, what part of the city you're from, like Dorchester, Rock. It doesn't matter when you go when you leave the states. You're representing Boston, like you know Boston, Mass. It's not. I don't care what street you were from. I don't care what hood you were from. When you put on our uniform or you stop by the facility, you know you're representing your family first yourself and then the organization and and a lot of kids are buying into it and a lot of kudos to you know guys like bob connors that i got to meet throughout the years in fantasy camp because a lot of those guys do they do donate money toward my foundation and and the facility and stuff like that and 
and it just keeps growing. I mean, we're already looking for new property. Like I want to do softball, competitive softball in the city. We're looking into volleyball. And right now I'm limited with space, but we're making it work. And uh, we probably outgrew it six months ago, which is great. But um, but the city knows the Red Sox. I mean, the mayor, Michelle Wu, uh, is a big supporter. Uh, Ex-mayor Marty Walsh, a big donor that we have, uh, you know, New Balance owners. Like we have a lot of people really believe in what we're doing. And it's all for the kids. I mean, it's it's pretty cool to be able to that I can say my full time job right now is to go help these inner city kids and just be a bridge for them. You know what I mean? Like I'm not going to promise them that I'm getting them to the big leagues because that's pretty much impossible. And um, but just the right guidance, put them around a good bunch of kids that want the same thing, the right goals and have fun doing it. So it's uh, you know, that's my passion. And, you know, mm -hmm. I could talk for days about it because, you know, we're doing, yeah. we're doing great things. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. No, yeah. and, and you know what? And, and this generation right now, these kids, they need this. Like, I yes. mean, I don't know how, you know, like I'm, I'm in my 40s. So we're all about, you know, that ballpark. But and Christina can vouch, you know, because she's a teacher. But how hard has it been for you to teach, you know, especially like teenagers? Like, have you seen a big difference from a couple of years? So now, because again, with the generation and social media and everything that come, you know, that goes on, it can be a little hard, especially for them to kind of get their academic, you know, grades where they have to be. Yeah, well, I'm I'm a I'm a dad of two kids. My son's 16 and my daughter's 14. Uh, both honor roll students, both both really good awesome. athletes, baseball, softball, volleyball, name it, they do it. Um, but for me, the most of the impact, you know, when we first started, it was, you know. I wanted to help the inner city kids in Boston, which that's what we're doing. That's our mission. That's never going to change. But we're now we're also trying to we're seeing like kids from outside the city, like what we're doing in our program. So some kids come in there, they don't even play baseball and they're coming in to do homework. Like we partnered up with uh, Northeastern, Boston College, Leslie College, Curry College. So they'll send us their students that want to be teachers for our after school programs, which is going to start in September. So these kids can actually come in do their homework, study, whichever, uh, whatever class they need to work on, and then and then do the sport. So we're really trying to create the student athlete. But to answer your question, I I coach my the 16 U team, which is the older kids, 16, 17 year olds. So like you said, social media, video games, they think they know it all. So yeah. like right now <laughs> Yeah. So you know, so my son now is starting to drive, you know, he's getting his, mm -hmm. his driving lessons in. So, you know, they want to be treated like men, but at the same time, they they want to be treated like little kids too, and we can't do that. So we try to find the balance of, because you don't want to lose the kids either. But for example, we had one kid that goes to Catholic Memorial, good private school, great kid. Um, his parents work hard for that. Like for him to go to a private mm -hmm. school, being an inner city kid is not easy. You know, parents yep. got to work, work their butts mm -hmm. off to really make it work for him. And, you know, he was a little bit of a headache, you know, the last couple of years, but he's starting to get it now. Like, you know, right. he's he's a junior at CM now. Like we're helping him do college visits and he's starting to get it. So what we're doing is working. So but like I said, it was the toughest group because they think they know it all already. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but little by little, you see the transition of kids helping each other do their homework. Uh, they like Chris, you won't be able to practice unless you do this. So you see other kids helping each other to make sure they feel because we make these kids sign contracts. We make the parents sign academic contracts. So they all sent, they all brought us their report cards and we know what their GPA is, where they're struggling. So once we get the, you know, the, the, the teachers that want to be students into our facilities, they have no excuses. Like, okay, this is your GPA of 3.2 right now. It dropped down to a 3.0, like why? And if, yeah. and if they don't, if they're not doing what they're supposed to, like we're getting progress reports. Like we're really on them academically because without school, you can't go anywhere. Yeah, I told guys yeah, I graduated. Exactly, yeah. I graduated out of West Roxbury High School. I wasn't the best student in the world. I can say I was a little lazy, but <laughs> I got I got by. But it's so different now. Like like mm -hmm. protein colleges, they all see academics important. Your grade point average, like how are you as a person? How are you as a as a mm -hmm. as a student? So all these things combined really create the student athlete. So we're just trying to, you know, I, we do tend to yell at them a lot. But like if you see our younger kids, like tens, elevens, thirteens. They still look up to us like, yes, coach. Oh, I'm in trouble. Oh, yes, coach. You know, oh. you say you say one thing and they look at you smiling. Like the older kids are like, oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it, it took a while, but they're they're getting it. And I think that's how we're really being impactful in the city.
Now, what are the ages that, what is it, where does it start? Uh, right now, well, we, we, we've done summer clinics. We do like we had February vacation. We have a summer camp now for April vacation. Um, but we, we've had kids up to like six years old come in, never thrown a baseball. Wow. Yeah, so you wow. get them young. And then our mm -hmm. for our teams, we have we had three teams last year and we grew to seven teams. So the program is growing and we have a 10, 10 year old team, an 11 year old team, a 13, two 14s. A 16 and a 17 right now with the expectation that as we're growing, you know, with, you know, fingers crossed, we find a bigger location that we can actually do every single age group and not have a gap, you know? And at the same time, cause we, the demand for softball is there. My daughter, like I said, she plays for a program called chaos out of Bridgewater in Massachusetts. And I love the competitiveness of, of how they play, like the way she's pitching, is, I'm scared to catch her. Like, believe it or not, I can't. Catch her right now. You, would laugh. Hey, that's good. You, you would laugh because I'm like in full gear in the facility, and she's throwing a bullpen at me, and I'm like terrified. <laughs> but it is that, that. that competitiveness that they have, and I want to bring that to the city so bad. But we just need a bigger location. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's amazing. That's that is amazing. I yeah, because as a school teacher, I know how hard it is to work with kids and. And just, you know, um, it's, I feel like as a school teacher, I'm fighting technology every day because, you know, yeah. they, they just, they want to do this all the time. And it's, you know, getting them to read and to write. They just don't want to do that anymore. They don't, you know, so finding books that interest them and just things to get there, you know, and trying to, under, trying to get them to understand that education is so important because they, that's when they're going to get further in life. You know, they all, yeah. I, I teach little ones and they're all like, oh, when I grow up, I'm going to have this big house and this beautiful car and this, this. And I'm like, <laughs> baby, do you understand? You, you don't just wake up one day and I'm an adult. And oh, yeah. look, all these things are here. Like yeah. you have to work to get those things, sweetie. Like you have to work. You have to know how to, you know, do an interview, fill out a job application, how to read social skills. Like it's teaching is not just reading and writing. There's you're teaching them social skills and life skills and how to get along, how to look adults in the eyes and, it's just so much. So I, I'm so honored with what you're doing because that just really helps yeah. helps these kids yeah. out. It really, all does. that is awesome. You say that because my best friend and business partner. I mean, our our story is he grew up in South and I grew up in Jamaica Plain as a kid. Two different parts of the city that it was a lot of violence that didn't get along. You know, shootouts and drugs and all that stuff. But we, I would go to South End. He would come to my house in JP. And then we both ended up moving to Hyde Park, but his parents and my parents knew each other before we were born. So he was my catcher wow. in high school. Uh, oh, and the amazing. cool part is his name is Jose Diaz. He's um, obviously my partner for the BAA. And he uh, he was in admissions for 16 years. So he knows the recruiting process. He knows how to you know yeah. break down GPAs and and FAFSA and FAA, all this stuff. Like, believe me, or not, I got drafted out of high school. So you guys are like, how does this kid know all this stuff? <laughs> I learned, I learned all this stuff. I learned all this stuff like through Jose because if you look at our website, we have you know videos of breaking down like college applications because you know a lot of the parents in the inner city, you know, not like you said, yeah. not everybody's rich. So a lot of these parents they don't really know that there's grants out there and there's help. Exactly, really help their kids there's help. Them. Yes. So wow. having having Jose with his academic background has been amazing because he 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 goes he brings in families that just don't understand like you know. And I hate saying like my Latin people, because you yeah. know, there, there's a lot of them in the city. They see college and they think dollars and and yeah, they bills can't afford that, right? Yeah, and they can't afford it. So you see kids not going to college as much as you would want. But mm -hmm. now slowly, like they're understanding, like we bring them in, we set the parents down, we explain to them this is his GPA. He's not gonna go to a Vanderbilt, he's not gonna go to Texas, but there's right. other ways that he can get there. He can go to a, a two-year school, he can go to right. an NAIA you know, something different to get him to where he wants to get. But every kid has the ability and the opportunity to go. It's just you finding the exactly. help that's correct for it. So mm -hmm. so we're doing that a lot with the parents in the city, like all these kids that are juniors and seniors right now. We're doing a lot of college visits. I'm, I'm hoping to go to UMass Boston in the next few weeks, uh, maybe Northeastern after that. But, um, but yeah, but like I said, Jose, he's been amazing when it comes to to the academic side of it, because a lot of these kids are like, I'm not going to school. My parents can afford school, but there's so right. much help in Massachusetts yes. that they don't know about that. If you're a mass resident, like you get a lot of help, you just got to find it.
you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like money yeah. should be the last thing they worry. If they want to have an education, like they have to understand that there are ways and we have to like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Latina too. So I get it. Like our Latin population, they see college and like, Oh no, you know, I can't afford this, but we have to kind of like educate them that there is help out there. Like if you have yes. a kid who has good GPA, who's willing to go to school, like he can make it. Like yeah. don't yeah. ever say, no, you can't because I don't and have the money. So many that programs, should never be. So many ways. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Should never yes. be on their mind about school. Yeah. <laughs> about yeah. money for them. Is, we, we just had a kid. Uh, his name is Jose Reyes. He just committed to Leslie. He plays baseball. Oh, Academic. Awesome. Made a little bit of work, but he, we went to the campus as a group. So we took about 15 kids to Leslie. They sent us a bus to the facility. You know, my marketing guy, you probably see it on the website, did a really good job capturing the kid, talk a little bit about you know, the campus and like he met the baseball team and, you know, it's just stories like that. They really get like, should make a, another kid be like, oh man, like that's pretty cool. Like, I, why can't I do that? Yeah. Like, yeah. Right, there, yeah. right there, right in front of you. So, yeah. so another thing is like, we partnered up with like Boston Public Schools in Boston. So BPS. So we, we ran our first STEM program in the summer last year, which was pretty cool. I mean, it was kind of hectic, 120 kids in the school, but it was, uh, <laughs> it was amazing. It made us learn a lot. So now with Jose's background, we're going to try to do our own. We're not going to name it STEAM or STEM. We're going to name it like teams. So, you know, Good. a smaller group to see how it goes. And that's that's going to be hopefully for this summer. And uh, like I said, it's been amazing. So a lot of these kids are starting to take what we're doing. Not that they're not taking it seriously, but now they're really trying to think like, oh, man, I can go to school. Like, oh, this is pretty cool what these guys are doing. Like, I've never had this. And there's other people mm -hmm. awesome that, you know, that that do stuff. But I think we're just a different animal when it comes to the academic and we're really <laughs> trying to help these kids, you know. Right. That's yeah, amazing. Awesome. <clears throat> Love that. That's amazing. Yeah. Um I actually, well, first of all, Christina's from Texas. <laughs> She's in Texas. <laughs> And Liv is from Jersey, but she is in Georgia. I am in Georgia, Southern here, Southern Belle, guys. Right. <laughs> I'm from Texas, but recently moved to Massachusetts and I live in Framingham. Um, so like, that's kind of like a, a dream for me just to be in this area because I've been a Red Sox fan, you know, pretty much most of my life. And um, so um, I'm just learning more about this area and everything and that your program is something that's just I had no idea about because I'm not from here. And so yeah, you know, but the cool thing is that a lot of people we still have people that come in, new faces that are like, dude, we didn't even we didn't even know about this. Like and I'm yeah, like, you gotta get it out. It'll be it'll be two years in July. So wow. we've, we've been wow, we've been, no, been nonprofit for about like six years, six, seven years, like you know, doing events to raise money and then we the location. And but when I say it's like we all grew this like six months ago, we all grew it. And but in a good way, like you go in there. Yes, and that's even, a good thing. Even mm -hmm. the parents, the parents are like the way we interact with the kids, the way we make it fun. And, you know, when we, we try to keep them like enjoying coming back to the facility. So like these kids, some kids are there like every day. I'm like, dude, I'm about to make like get you a hammock so you can go <laughs> like stay in the back. <laughs> Let's go stay here, yeah. But, that, but that's, what, yeah. that's what we want. But that's, that's a what good we thing. Want. Yes, when I say yes. like, like, like I know I think you had Keith Folk on not too long ago. Like Keith, I get to see mm -hmm. him in the family. Mm -hmm. Percent like knows oh. about the program and he loves what I'm doing and a lot of guys, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a golf tournament coming up in July where. I've invited uh, David Ortiz's daughter, uh, daughter Alex, to come sing the national anthem, and she says she's willing to do oh, it. Uh, oh, that's amazing! That's awesome. Awesome. That's awesome. So, so, so we have a, we have a lot of moving parts, but like as long as we're going in the right direction, I think that's what's important. And mm -hmm. and seeing the the parents believe in what we're doing in the community in Hyde Park has been has been pretty much amazing. So that's great. Yeah, yeah. I commend you for that because, like Mel said, I'm a school teacher here in Texas, and we do have a lot of minorities in our school. In fact, from when, I don't know, 15 years ago to now, it's grown, you know, more minorities have come in. And I'm one of the only teachers there who speaks Spanish. I'm the only bilingual teacher. There's not another bilingual teacher. And so mm -hmm. I have parents though that come to me, you know, and they only speak Spanish. And they tell me like, Mrs. Puentes, what can we do? Because of course they only, they're speaking to me in Spanish, but they tell me, what can we do 
because we want better for our children. Like, you know, like the moms clean houses and the dads are like construction workers. Works. And there's nothing wrong with those professions. Don't get me wrong. That's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But the parents come to me and they say, like, we want better for our kids. We don't want our kids to go through everything we go through. What can we do? How can you help us? Because they only speak Spanish and no one else speaks Spanish. And they're like, hell. And so like, it's me, I'm joining these committees and I'm helping them and I'm telling mm -hmm. them like, well, there's this out there, you know, like Texas has this thing. Like if you're the first one to go to college from your family, you get a scholarship and there's these mm -hmm. kind of grants and these kind of, like you said, in the fast and stuff. And I tell them, but a lot of them don't know how to, these parents, they don't even know how to read English. So they don't know how to fill out these forms. So like, I'm trying to help them with that and stuff because mm -hmm. they want to break the cycle. They want better for their children. They want their children to go to college. They want their children to do better. They, they're, they're sacrificing and doing everything that they're doing, like cleaning houses, working two jobs, doing what they have to do mm -hmm. so that their kids don't have to. They want their kids to become, you know, you know, doctors and lawyers and they want their kids to, you know, or school teachers, but you know, they want their kids, you know, to have different professions, but they just need to help getting their foot in the door and where to start. Yeah. And sometimes they're scared to ask because of the language barrier, because they don't want to be made fun of or laughed at. Yeah. So I commend you for what you're doing because I know the Latino community really needs someone in their corner. Yeah, I get I get that a I'm lot an of advocate. The, yes. Yeah. I get that a lot in the facilities. So a lot of like Spanish families, um, if, you, if you guys happen to get a chance ever just to come in and see us when we're busy and, you know, I got, I got Spanish music playing, then I'm, I'm listening to George Strait and Jason Aldean and yeah. we mix it up. techno music. I mix it up because we have such Same. a diversity in yeah. our program that okay. it's amazing. So when it comes to the parents, like I'm the best, I speak Spanglish pretty good. I call it Spanglish. So yeah. You know, so, <laughs> but at the same time, I call it text mix here. Yeah, I, I, I like So like, even when I talk to my parents now, like we talk in Spanglish, which is pretty cool. But it's uh, but you're right. It's uh, it's one. The parents have to want to find the information that they need to help their kids, right? So we're trying mm -hmm. to push that. Like, hey, listen, you have help. Yeah, you don't speak English. We can help you with that. Like, we exactly. can translate because every college, it doesn't matter in Massachusetts whether you speak English or not. I mean, preferably you want to learn the language. Spanish, English, French, whatever it is. Like I messed up. My, my wife is Brazilian and my kids are literally English. Like they understand Spanish <laughs> and Portuguese, but I messed up. That was our fault, you know? Oh no. And, and if, if they can talk all three languages that they go to school, you know, and stuff like that. So like, but like my kids right now, like my son's like that. Um, he's never talked, like he wants to play baseball, wants to make it to the big leagues, but at the same time, he's like, Dad, I want to go to, like, right now he told me the other day he wants to go to, to Boston College. Like, they're a D1 school, uh, good baseball mm -hmm. program. He said he wanted to go to Texas, you know, D1 school. He wanted to go to Alabama and stuff like that. But I go, dude, I go, bring me straight. and that baseball work itself out. So, like, this time <laughs> yeah, next year, yeah, I yeah. start looking at the schools and, and, and see when they have those uh, – those those visits that we can have because I want them to go see the tech, like Texas. I want them to see Alabama. I want them to go to BC. Different options because you know mm -hmm. once you get to the school, your your body's gonna tell you if this is the place for you. Like you just look around right. and you feel the vibe, right? Mm -hmm. And I just bring me straight in. Same thing with my daughter on the other hand. She goes, I want to go to UCLA, and I'm like, you're not. I'm not letting you go all the way to California. Now. <laughs> <laughs> like, a daddy's girl. Yeah, daddy's girl. Oh, they're like no girls. girls. She's like, what? If you look at my daughter, she, she's, she's beautiful. She's the pain in my butt. But I'm like, you are oh. not going to know UCLA. I'm telling you. How old? Right how old did you, did you say? How old she was? Her age. Uh, she's 14, but like she 14. plays softball, oh, volleyball. Yeah. She's super athletic. <laughs> I mean, she's she's beautiful, and I'm terrified the older she gets. But you know, it's uh, yeah. it's life, right? Yep. So, yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. Girls are all girls are always yeah. harder. I don't care what they say. I know they say it shouldn't be a double standard, but me yeah. and my husband, we have two girls and a boy, and it's just harder. It is because there's yes. just certain worries with the girls compared to the boys. I mean, yeah. there really is. <laughs> yeah, I do no, know many. Uh, oh, good. Do, do you have do, do the, yeah, do the parents have do you have activities with the parents like are they very involved in everything that they do or is it mainly more for the kids like how does that work well I, I, when i say the parents are involved maybe sometimes too much that i gotta be like oh yeah <laughs> sometimes. But, like i got this i got this it's just, it's, like if, if you if you didn't know me and jose and you sat with us in a room like how we're talking right now this is how the vibe you would get 
from me and Jose talking in the same room with you guys. So when we talk to parents, mm-hmm. you know, they they're so about it that, you know, we they're calling us like, yo, uh, we figured out a way to do a fundraiser for this. Like we want to get involved. Like, how can we help? And I don't know oh. if other programs do that, but our parents are like 100 percent believing in what we're doing. Like other, they've left different programs, but they don't even get to talk to the coaches like the way they talk right. to us. So now at the facility, uh, you know, when we first started, it was only me and Jose uh, to, from two o'clock to 10 o'clock doing lessons ourselves. And it was very, very hard, but we made it work. We got the clientele in. <laughs> and now we're fortunate enough to have, uh, we have four other instructors now that we pay on salary, which we're doing great. So mm-hmm. one's Hector Vargas. Uh, he played with Cincinnati for seven years, all the way up to AAA. Uh, mm-hmm. Junior Pena, uh, one of my pitching instructors, he uh, played with Texas and Kansas City. Uh, Brian Mejia played with the Washington Nationals for seven years, all the way to AAA. And we just got a new guy, Ivan Gonzalez, like he played with Seattle. So the thing is, when you walk in there, you're just not getting training from just a regular normal person, like, oh, like mm-hmm. a, like yeah. somebody off yeah. the streets or somebody else you've never heard of. You can yeah. go online and find these guys, and these guys are professional guys that have the same passion that we have, and they, they're great teaching kids. So parents see that, and they're like, we never had anything like this. Like, you know, they'll say, you know, Johnny with a coach over there, and, like, we can't even really watch their practices. And like in my facility, they can sit down, like talk to us, watch their kids practice. Some parents, I gotta be like, they perform better when you're not here. So go in the off. <laughs> right, Bye. right. Bye. But, yeah. but, but being engaged and being a good community parents, like we can't ask for better parents than what we have right now. So, oh, that's amazing. Well, that's great. Um, makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Right? I mean, we, we've had yeah. a few parents where it's like, uh, but. You know, as part of the, <laughs> yeah. Part of I know. Business, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> but that's amazing because it does take a village. It really, truly, truly does. And yeah, so that's yeah. amazing because as long as you have parental support and the parents are on board and on the same page, then the kids will go even further. So that's great. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So, yeah, well, um, and then, and then the facility you. itself. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. It's like it's okay. like a couple of seconds behind or something. But like yeah. at the facility, it's, uh, it's pretty cool because we, uh, the people that own the building, they're they're called the collaborative. Um, St. Anne's Church, which is uh, is connected with the school that we have access to when it comes to our after school programs, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. They've been absolutely amazing. So when we first got in there, they were kind of nervous about you know baseballs being hit in the gym, and making noise, and, and all this other stuff. The neighbor having complained around the community because it's perfect. It's like you see the church and it's around neighborhoods like houses in Hyde Park and nobody's complained. The church has been amazing and and we're all about community awareness and giving back. So it's bringing more people to the church. At the same time, they see our program growing and they love that about uh, me and Jose and what we've done in the community at Hyde Park. So it's pretty cool. Wow. That's great. That's wonderful. That is amazing. That is amazing. What is the website so that people can go and, um, and take a look at it? Our uh, website yeah. is... Uh, baaboston.org that's baaboston.org i mean all of our information mission statements uh everything we've done to upcoming stuff that we got you know right around the corner um i mean our marketing guy uh his name's ace with 43 films i mean he does an amazing job capturing these kids and i mean if they just go there where if, it, if it's about academics of our baseball programs and you know when we have tryouts and all this stuff is on the website and it's pretty easy. Yeah, it's a, it's a great website. I've, I've definitely checked it out. <laughs> yes, I was, looking at, I was looking at it too. I was looking at it too. So that, that very, that, that's very inspiring and great for, for the kids. So mm-hmm. man, I, I definitely, um, you know, since I'm here in Georgia, I definitely do go up to Boston. I try to go there once a year. So I will make it so that I can go and see if you guys are available once and kind year, of go around there. Year? I know. I have, I'm, I'm up there like one more. But. I'm up there like three or four times a year. My husband's yeah, like, that's better. That's better. That's every time. <laughs> I'm my daughter, our daughter, actually, like we're from Texas, but our daughter just got married in September at the Boston Public Library. 
That's how much we love Boston. Uh-huh. She's like, oh, I'm getting married. Yeah. So she had her wedding at the Boston Public Library. Yeah. So we go, me and my husband actually got married in Fenway Park and then honeymooned there. And so like we go to Boston three or four times a year. That's like our second home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. We have fun when she comes. Like we've yeah, got, you, oh yeah. I see that I will, I, we I have traveled. Huh? What'd you say? Oh, my bad. No, no. I, you would think that I go to a lot of the Red Sox games, but I live in East Bridgewater, which is like South Shore right outside of Boston now. So it's mm-hmm. like every time I go to a game, it's like that traffic. And I remember as a player, I'm like, man, seventh inning comes around. I hear Sweet Caroline. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> but I, I watch it. it. Everybody laughs at me because like there's 162 games and I watch every single game. And <laughs> most of them are in the evening, so I'm good. But there is a few when they're during the day. And so I have it on my computer and I'm teaching and I'm over there. And my students go, Miss Puentes, are you watching the game? No, 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 no. You do your work, do your work, do your work. You're good. <laughs> and I'm over here like. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie. One time I was watching the game and it was, I cannot remember who hit a home run, but somebody hit a home run. And I was like, yes. Yeah. And my boss walked in right when I was going like this. And I was like. Oh, it's just stretching my arm. And she's like, I was like, crap, I almost got busted watching the ball game. Like, because I have it on my computer and I'm over here teaching in front of the class, but I'm like just sneaking a peek over here and stuff. Or I've got one AirPod hidden under my hair and I'm listening to it while I'm teaching. I'm, I'm yeah, pretty bad. You got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do to be on top of the game. Don't, don't, don't let them catch yeah. you, though. Once they catch you, then you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. it's big time. I know. So it's We've, like, uh, talked about this on the show before, but. I have definitely watched a game while at a funeral. Um, mm. Backstage, <laughs> when I was going to be performing, like on stage, I've checked the score. Like when it fled me the score, whenever I'm like singing and I'm like, hmm, like, you know, like right before we go out. Yeah, I've done that. Um, so we really are Sox addicts. Like we literally are addicted. No, yeah, that's we- good, but, but that's why Red Sox Nation is Red Sox Nation, right? That's oh everybody. Oh my God. Yeah, and definitely. It's big. We are big. Even when oh, I go yeah. to baseball games here and and the uh, Truist Park for the Braves, you, you can I can't imagine. Like I feel like I'm at home because there are so many Red Sox fans, and I'm like I just want to stay here with you guys. Like I, <laughs> I it's so great. Yeah. To see that, you well, know? like you know, yeah. it's, it's been like that forever too. Even when I play yes. like going to different stadiums, I'm like, there's more Red oh, Sox yeah. fans than their own fans, which is great. <laughs> and um, you know, oh, so obviously, the last couple of years have been a little tough. But yes, they have. You know, hopefully, you know, they can turn it around a little bit this year. I mean, I'm not <laughs> gonna say hopefully not this year, but next year. But I mean, I, I, I wanted to see more moves made this winter. I mean, I know. I, know I agree. Talking, you know, I agree but we'll be okay. And everything, so, Any predictions uh, that you have, Manny? Any predictions that you have for this season? Um, um, just I mean, seeing Giolito get hurt and that you know, really hurt. One of the biggest ac- acquisitions that this hurt. winter. It, it, that was a you know a punch in the gut, um, but like it I was. say, I, I know the Red Sox are going to try to you know make it a fun season as much as they can. I I personally think they still need help. Uh, Montgomery is still too. out there, Blake Snell still out there, um, but now you're starting to hear some of the Red Sox guys like speak out a little bit. Like I don't know if you guys heard Devers and Devers is like, yes, you know, yeah, you say you, yeah. you say you were gonna you say you were gonna do this and then it didn't happen, and now you still haven't done this and like. Pretty much saying I need help. Like the team needs help. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they always, totally. I always feel like they play well in spring training. So I, I don't get my hopes up with spring training because a lot mm-hmm. of young guys are doing great and mm-hmm. and it looks good. But when the season starts, like, do they have enough pitching, enough starting pitching? Like, yeah. Like Whitlock, and I, agree. I love Whitlock Everything. in the bullpen. I love Whitlock you know, in the bullpen. Like I'm glad when Kowski, I know he's upset because they told me he's going to the bullpen, but he's not a starting pitcher. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, I like you, Wink, but you're you're better from the bullpen. But I agree with you. I know it's just spring training, but even like today, we played the yuckies. I call them the yuckies, even though uh, and we beat them. I'm like, a great yes. day. And my and my husband's like, it's spring training. I don't give a shit. We beat the yuckies. We're done. We beat the exactly. yuckies. Exactly. World <laughs> series back on. Like, yeah. that's it. No, Let's no, go. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> That's it. Book the tickets. We're on our way. Too. Like, I, grew, I, grew, I grew up there liking the Yankees, too. So, like, you know, anytime you beat them, whether it's spring training or stick ball in the street, it doesn't matter. You beat the Yankees. I don't know. care. Exactly. That's it. Like, it's, but, I don't but, care if it's just spring training, as long as they do not win. 
<laughs> as an organization, I feel like they, they could have done more. Like Craig Breslow. Like, I agree. You know, I, I got to I play with him. Like, like coming up, I played with him. You know, they, they, they kind of threw him in a in something that needed fixing, and I thought he was going to have more leeway to do stuff. And I did really too. Didn't, which, you know, mm-hmm. but, but like I said, they're going to do the best that they can. I still think they're not done maybe bringing some guys in. Um, I don't know if J.D. Martinez I, has signed yet. Uh, it could be no, another he guy can use off the bench. No, but, uh, yeah. Right? Like, he's a power <laughs> bat. See what he's looking for? Maybe just yeah. another bat, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. Just, I, just, I just, like, Montgomery. Just, just a change in some way, somehow. Like, Montgomery, his wife works at yeah. the medical yeah. center. Yeah. Yeah, I just I think we need a, we just need another pitcher. We need another yeah. arm. I would I would be more at ease if we signed another pitcher. I don't yeah. even care who at this point. I just really would be more at ease if I knew there was another <laughs> yeah. starting pitcher in our line and our rotation. Like it's just a little no, because, it's a little scary right now because right now you have you have Gary Willock and talk like Tanner Hawk like they're all fighting for mm-hmm. to be stars and those are two guys mm-hmm. that I've seen the way they throw like. As good as they are, can be two guys that can give the ball to Kelly Jansen to close the game out. So it's like exactly. they need a couple more starting pitchers, and I think they'll be they'll be fine. You know? But mm-hmm. we'll see what happens. I mean, I I'm not gonna sit here because baseball is weird. Like they, they can be hot for a month. Oh, you, you guys know baseball. It'll be yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 for two weeks. We, and then we'll it is. It, it has been a roller coaster ride all my life. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it it only a roller coaster. Like, yeah, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. You could be up five games and then be down ten games in a month. Not even yep. so. Yes. You know, hopefully yes. it'll be a fun season. No more, no more injuries. Uh, Trevor Story stays healthy. Like you know, they oh, get more I hope like, so. Please, please. Yeah. And uh, you know, and I think they'll be fine. Offensively, they'll be fine. I just think they still need to get a couple more pitchers. I agree. Yes, yes. I completely Definitely. agree. So hopefully yeah, tomorrow yeah. They, or sometime this this evening there'll be an update like we got Montgomery and oh my god <laughs> I'll start drinking. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be that'll be <laughs> You've good. been drinking. I don't know what you're talking about. No. <laughs> You've been drinking. No, my, I, I, no comment. I was at the. I was at, <laughs> I was at the. I was at the facility today with my son and I'm like over here prepping in my mind like okay what are we gonna talk about like I need to get you know I gotta get my green beer I gotta do all this stuff for you know. To talk to you guys and my son's like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, I had him down here. He was like my tech guy, like, putting the camera up for me, like get the background right. That, that's the whole floor back there. I don't know if you guys can see it. it yeah. It's too dark, but it's it's like a one of those lights that you see at the bars. It says like the old Budweiser in right field. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then it says cool. World Series Champions 04 on the bottom. So I kind of stole oh, that nice. from the souvenir shop right across the street from Fenway. <laughs> <laughs> or I bought it. Love that. So. Love that. Love that. Yeah, bought it. We'll see. Well, I do have um, a few questions that um, people wanted me to ask you. One is from Bob Connors, which he said, <laughs> "No, Colorado is hot." <laughs> He's like, "Colorado is hot going to World Series." You guys had a few guys from the 04 team who were pretty good. Winky. Um, <laughs> what did they say to keep you all focused on the prize? I do know the answer to this, but I would like to hear it again. Does I said I guess sorry, it was, it was breaking up. Oh, sorry. He said, "What did they say to keep you all focused on the prize?" What did what they was, say to us? Yeah. What did, What was the thing that was said to y'all, or, or maybe put somewhere for y'all to read? Oh, you know that, that was uh, against the not Colorado. Or was he talking about against Cleveland? I don't know. It's, when when was it? It was the it was a thing that well yeah well also, it, was, uh, it yeah. was to get to the World Series against Cleveland because we we were yes, down three to yes. one against Cleveland yes 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 and yes, you know being down three to one is never a good thing and uh-huh. I don't know if you guys remember uh-huh. the first baseman his name is Ryan Garko at the time he uh he made a comment uh, saying that you know. It doesn't matter where we play right now, that the champagne is going to taste the same. Yeah. So so I, I think it was our travel secretary that literally took the quote that he said and he printed it out and put it on everybody's locker of what Ryan Garko oh. said. So when we actually beat them and came back and went and then we beat them, we all had champagne and we're like, Garko, we're screaming and like, <laughs> That's great. That's amazing. If you guys remember 07, you know, Colorado 
they clinched early. They were waiting for us to get there, and we ended up playing seven games. So we kind of went in there hard already, ready to play, and they were kind of sitting a little bit, and then we mm-hmm. ended up sw- like we swept them. So yeah. it was a I just wish we swept them. I just wish we beat them and got to celebrate in Boston. We were in Colorado, yeah. and it was it was cool. Yeah, but being able to strip down like game on or something, you know, lands down and mm-hmm. be, be pretty. It would have been a lot yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Oh, good memories! Just to think about oh, that. I know. Memories. 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 Just, I miss that. Yeah. I miss that Great so movie. much. I, can, I, I want can, that back. I can, I can tell you stories. I can tell you a lot more stories, but I can't get in trouble either. So you know. <laughs> you won't tell anybody. This is a secret show. Like, yeah, nobody wants to know. Just say it. Oh. So man. there's a guy um that from Twitter and his name is John and he, I guess he knows your dad or did your dad like from a, a bowling thing. And he said like um, candle pin bowling. Somehow he knows them. Anyway, he yeah. said, what is, he says that you play. So he said, what is your high single and candle pin bowling and your favorite flavor of ice cream at Ron's, the bowling alley. Oh. <laughs> wow, getting very, very yeah, 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 yeah. He knows you. <laughs> so don't be lying. No, well, well, <laughs> no, well Ron, Ron's ice cream is actually one of, we grew up in Hyde Park with them. Um, still go there because the facility is literally like six minutes from there. Um, my high single, uh, probably like a 150 something, maybe. Ooh. But, um, but like Ron's ice cream, they've been support the, the Sunjay that runs it now, super sport. We do, uh, they actually donate ice cream for our summer camps in the summer for the kids. So, like, on the last Aww. day of camp, we'll have pizza and ice cream, and then like a local pizza shop from High Park, Happy Pizza donates the pizza. But, um, but I don't eat, I like, I don't really eat ice cream like that at Ron's. I normally get an Oreo frat. So, oh, oh, okay, that's yummy. Oreo fries. I'm trying to stay away from that because I'm trying to lose some, I'm trying trying to lose some, some, a couple of LBs. So, I'm trying to stay away from that. Yeah, I, I, um, it gets harder and harder. You get older and older, I promise. In the winter, yeah, in the winter, since I've lived here, I've put on probably about 15 pounds since I've lived here. I'm almost 50. I used to be here. Well, hey, I'm almost 50, and I used to be able to eat like anything. Now I just look at food, and I get a pound. I look at that pizza. There it goes, two pounds. Like yeah. that. I mean, can't oh, even look man. at the damn food. It's well, like I gain know, weight. You know, us, us Latinos, my mom, like, like, because I normally, like, mm-hmm. I do intimate fasting where I even try, because I, I don't eat until, like, 11. And then I like keto. Like, I pretty much I like cheese. I like salty food. So, but my biggest thing is staying away from bread, pasta, and rice. So, but being Latino, my mom's like, "Oh, I made rice, rice and beans and chicken. How am I gonna say no to my mom?" You know yeah, what never. I mean? Never. Right. Right. Well, that's that's life. Story. Yeah. Well, yeah. my husband one time he went to the doctor and he, and he told him, "Well, you need to stay away from the the carbs. Like you need to stay away from the potatoes and the rice, no nope. tortillas." And this, and my husband goes. And what do I eat? <laughs> what, what do I eat? He's like, well, you, you can eat the taco, but without the tortilla, just eat the meat. And my husband goes, that's not a taco. <laughs> that's not a taco. No. Like, that's, no. It's like, my no, wife no. makes me tortillas, arroz con pollo, frijoles. He's like, oh, you know, this is not working for me. Yeah. But, you know, we, we like <laughs> our food. I ain't gonna lie. With, uh, with Ron Ice Cream, uh, the bowling alley, they, like, when I say that was like our place as kids, like, we used to play candle pin bowling there. We used to go to tournaments. To represent them as well but it was like another way to keep like our families together because, like i said i mentioned my five best friends all of our families bowled in the same league so we got to see each other all the time in the winter so we weren't on the street you know when it came down to spring my dad still played softball and we were following them all the way and we all always we were always together so ron's ice cream like a lot of places in high park really kept us like off, like out of trouble, I would say. Even right. Though we in trouble, it, was, it was like you know how it is. It's easy to to you know like my son right now. He had a girlfriend. I don't know if he's still with her, but oh, you know, there, a, lot of, a lot of distract. He's gonna kill me, but a lot of distractions <laughs> happen with, with the way the generation is now. So it's like you yes, know, we just want to be able to balance and just hopefully they just make good choices and, and we can be part of that. You know, yeah. so, that's amazing. Yes. So being All from Texas, do. we have we don't have candle pen bowling that I've ever heard of. So I'm gonna have to experience that. So 
I know. Yeah. So what is that? How harder, different is that? Than, it's like it's smaller harder. ball. It's harder than regular well, ball. Well, the, the ball the balls are literally like maybe two pounds seven ounces, like almost like like super small, like that you can there's no holes in them. No like, holes in them. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh. then when you hit, and when you hit the pins, like the ones that you actually knock down, you can actually use those to knock the other ones down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, like in tin yeah. pin, you know how you, you hit the head pin and the machine comes down and it picks it back up. Like in candle pin, you whatever pins you knock down, you can actually use them to hit a pin on the corner or whatever, however you want to do it. Mm-hmm. You oh. still get three balls. We're gonna have to play that. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna have to go to Boston and yeah. play that. Though. We can play. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. We're gonna get us. I don't know if we're gonna get a. I just want to eat ice cream. I can, but she's like, just give me the ice cream. Just give me the ice cream. It's my favorite dessert. Just give me the ice cream. Y'all play. I'll eat the ice cream. I'll take the Oreo because I'm. I just. I. No, listen. That Oreo. Oh no, I love ice cream. Chocolate chip cookie dough, salted caramel. If you give me ice cream, I'm a happy camper. That's my favorite. We got bluebell here in Texas, and I'm a bluebell girl. <laughs> that Oreo frap at Ron's, once you try it, you'll be back more than once a year. To get it? It. Oh, uh, man. Okay, I'm in trouble. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so um, I know somebody who knows you. It's actually my boyfriend, Mike Antonellis. Yeah, yeah. Yeah he, yeah, he said that, you know, in Portland, when he worked, he's, you know, he had t- was talking about you yesterday when I was telling him that you were going to be on the show. So, um yeah, he's done candle pinball. And so I'm just saying, if you ever wanted your family and Mike and I go play some candle pinball and I'm down, I'll probably lose and I'll do very bad, but I could eat ice cream. Like, <laughs> no, no, but that's what I'm saying. Like Ron's is super close. We we can make it happen. And okay. I, don't take any, I don't take any prisoners. So, you know, I okay. want to take it easy. Just yeah, yeah, yeah I don't like that. I don't like, yeah, don't, yeah. Uh, my wife hate, my, my wife is very competitive as well, and she can tell you that I, I, even against the kids. I'm oh, I know. Yeah, been there. <laughs> even yeah. against the kids. Oh my god, yeah. that's funny. That's yeah. funny. I know. Like <laughs> saying when we when we play games with the kids, and one time my daughter said, "My friend said you're supposed to let the kids win." I said, "Not here." I said, "Shoot, mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm 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 in it. If, you want you better be better than me. If you better, yeah. What did Who you know? accomplish if you let them yeah. win? Uno can get very violent in our house. I'm telling you. <laughs> well, I, I believe me. I even PlayStation with my son right now. Like he just talks trash the whole time, and I can't play. <laughs> like whatever happens, just to play the game, and you win, shake hands, you walk. No, he's just mm-hmm. in my face now, and I'm like, dude, dude. Yeah, not, competitive. You want to play him anymore? Yeah. So, do you play the show? Like, do you play MLB the show? Uh, we play MLB the show. That that's not bad. Like we actually try to play. We'll play on the like on the same team, and it's pretty cool. But then he, he convinced me to play Madden and football, and there's rules. You got to follow the rules, and he's just the whole time just chirping and chirping. <laughs> and just, like, so yeah. we, we we ended it one and one. I beat him the first time. He beat me the second game, and right. not going for ground three. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And well, the, we that well, all we well, all three of us watched the game today, like um, against the Yankees, and the, in the first inning it was nine zero. Oh was my zero. God, that was great! Us, <laughs> which was like shocking to me. I turned it on and it was nine to zero. Oh my God, it was like home run after home run. I was like, am I watching the home run derby? Like, what's going I on? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was a home game. Well, is it the? It was spring the, training uh, in, in Fort Myers. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah JetBlue. Yeah, it was JetBlue. Yeah, JetBlue. That story had a home run, and and Wong had a home run, and like it was just going Devers. and you know Devers, and then you had like, um, Dudon had a double, and he had a triple, and he had a single, so it was like just everybody was hitting, and we went through the Lopez, whole, you know. Lopez had a home run. <clears throat> yeah, we played. Yeah. We played the Braves too. We played the Braves too, and oh, we yeah, that was tied three yeah. three. That's the thing. Like now that they're around the corner, right before the season starts, like this is what you want to mm-hmm. see, right? Like Trevor yeah. Story yeah. helped me. Devers yeah. doing oh what God. he got to do. A little bit of help for Devers is, is what I'm preaching because he needs a little bit of help yeah. in the lineup. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. seeing him win is good. I love like, him. Yeah. Yes. The decisions they have to make before the roster cuts and, and all so that the stuff. Andre Rafael has just been doing amazing. It's, it's going to oh, be the yeah. hardest uh, decisions to make because they're going to make cuts and stuff. And who's going to be yeah. there on opening day, you know? I know. So, 
-hmm. But like I said, so we're watching the game today. Like it's 9-0, 9-0 in the first inning. And I'm jumping up and I'm dancing. I'm like, World Series back on. And my husband's like, it's spring training. I don't give a fuck. We're beating the Yankees. 9-0. <laughs> Book the tickets. We're World Series bound, baby. And he's like, uh -oh. I'm okay. Going. Pump the brakes. Pull the e-brake a little bit. Just a little bit. Slow down. Just a little bit. <laughs> but just I need the little that you bit. The Yankees. Okay. It's a great no, game. It's, it's just right now, a win is a win. And the more wins they get is the more confident the team gets with Cora. And, exactly. You know, yeah. and yeah. all, the comments, all the comments they've made about the front office and the you know the winter and not making moves that fans <laughs> wanted, not re-signing guys, whatever. You know, yeah. as long as – they're all healthy going into the season. Like none of us can really predict what's going to happen. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. I agree. I agree. But yeah. no, we definitely need to motivate our, you know, our, our boys because again, Red Sox Nation, you know, we are very like, you know, we're opinionated. We will say how we feel, but we really need to motivate them because a lot of people were on Twitter, or on social media talking about let's ban Fenway. Don't go to the games because they didn't do this. Stop playing games. You're still going to go there. You're still going to watch the Red Sox play. So stop talking all this trash. I mean, we are used to, you know, we won World Series, but it's okay. We're in the struggle bus right now, but we still have to, you know, motivate our boys. Like, well, it is that, what well, it that's is. The, that, that's the thing. It took it took time to get it good, right? It took time to yes. break the curve. It took time to, you know, bring four championships in, in a decade. You know what I mean? And, and it was special. Mm -hmm. You know, 07, mm -hmm. 13, 18, like, a lot of organizations didn't do that. And you know, not that they lost their way, they will get back to it, and it's, it's stepping stones. You know what I mean? Like, but yeah. it starts. It starts with the fans. Like, I didn't want to. Like, I hated going to like Toronto at times or Baltimore when they were bad, even as as a Red Sox because their stadium was like empty. You know, mm -hmm. and Red Sox fans, like, I mean, we're we're loyal to the T, but at the same yes. time, this, this is the time where they need to step up and be fans and be passionate about the game and really support the team and. And, and motivate them to do well. Not that they don't try to do well, but when you hear the chatter on outside the outside the lines, you know it really gets to some guys. And you know, so hopefully, yes, I Fox agree. Mason will just step up and be like, you know mm -hmm. what, this is our team. Let's root for them and let's push them to win. Exactly, exactly. exactly. So May seventh and eighth, when they come here to play the Braves, I am going to be there both games, supporting my team, whether <laughs> we lose or win. I don't care. I'm going to be right there. And that's what yeah. I'm gonna be doing on my part. And that's just it. don't just, just don't know. drink too much and get kicked out, okay? Just, just yeah. and, really and you know what? I think that's I really a possibility. I'm gonna be watching the game. I'll be like, hey, there goes my girl Liz. In, in handcuffs. <laughs> in handcuffs. <laughs> in handcuffs. <laughs> They're gonna be talking. Hey, there's the fan. They're trying to get out. I'm like, oh, is that Liz? Yeah, there she is. No. <laughs> that's my girl. And if it's a Sunday, don't worry. One of my first collect calls from the jail will be like, I gotta call my girl Melissa because I still gotta do a podcast on Sunday. So don't worry. <laughs> but it's true but i agree with you about the fans because i mean like you were saying about going to toronto like even i feel i i'll be honest i don't like the race i hate the race but even when they're doing good and they show Trot Field and it's empty, I'm like, man, the race <laughs> fan base sucks. But, but, it, but, it, but it, show, it shows you, like, you know, like even even though it's been a rough couple of years, you know, family still almost so yeah, bad. Yeah, and we, we could be bad fans. and we're still full, yes. Yeah, you're going to get some fans that are like, ah, you know, screw this, screw that. But I get it, you know. Yes, you but like. Yeah, I, I remember growing up as a kid, my parents can give me. You know, ten bucks, and I can get a hot dog. I can get a soda. I can get cracker jacks. So now, you know, family, for a family of four, and you spend a lot of money. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah. And then you add the team not doing well, and then key injuries. Uh, like, yeah, I know it is hard. It is. I just, just think about this: 162 games. You got guys already <laughs> training from the winter to spring training to 162 games, and then to do it again. You know? I know it is very hard. I, didn't yeah, want to I just want just to be patient, have fun with it. I think it's going to be a better season than last year. And yeah. baseball is it works in mysterious ways. You know, like if, yeah. if if they stay healthy with the guys that they have now, I think it should be a fun season. Yeah, I'm really hoping that Story stays healthy this season because mm -hmm. I love Story. I think he's a great player. I feel bad for him because you know he's been hurt. So I'm hoping that he stays healthy this season and everything mm -hmm. goes well and. I mean, I I mean Cassie, Cassie, 
Cass is at first base, finished the second half great last year. Looks yes, like he did. A great oh, 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 oh. Uh, Duran stays healthy with his speed. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, he's doing well. So, like, they, they do have, you know, pieces to make it a, an exciting team, you know? Yes, yeah. I just wish but we like, had – I'll be honest. I just wish we had another pitcher in the, bo- in the yeah, rotation. I mean, that's what like, if we can get that, I think they'll be fine, you know? So – Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't count mm-hmm. us off. Don't count us out, though. We can still come back. So <laughs> still always. always, 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 always. Yeah. Yeah. Optimistic till the end. Exactly. Um, yeah. At the end, of the season's almost over. You know, there's only 30 games left, and so you still there's a chance if so and so loses and we win exactly. and this happens and carry the one and minus two exactly. and okay, exactly. we're good. We're good. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's hope that it doesn't come down to that. Let's hope that exactly we, you know, you're up a few mm-hmm. games. And you don't have to. Win. Oh, I know. Yeah. I hope yeah. so. I don't want to be like this watching, like, oh my god, I, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I no, know. That's a, no, okay, so Christine and I went to that Brave series, which we swept. The brave the last year, like the second brave series, right? Like the second yes, one. Yeah. yeah, the second one. And I'm just in there, like, because I'm like focused in. I feel like if I focus with them, then it's gonna help. Mm-hmm. Not Christina, right. like she is like like acting like a scared, like I don't know. I can't I can't stay still. I pace. She's like, she's like pace. moving around. I'm like, and I I'm pace. like <laughs> You know, and I'm doing all my rituals like two, 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 two. Okay, base hit, ball four, base hit, ball four, base hit, ball four. Okay, all right, all right. You seen it, you saw it. Now put the bat on it. We got this. I'm like, I'm up by all these cheers. I'm going, you know, like, oh, no, no. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use this one. And they're looking, people are looking at me like, is she having a seizure? What the heck's wrong with this lady? I mean, the funny thing is, that is the day that towards the end we were hanging out with Stephen from ITM podcast and um it's the end and Steve and I are kind of the same we're just kind of like stoic we're just like looking and watching and then but Joey and Christina are like oh my god what is that what is that like they are like nervous energy I'm like (laughs) lord (laughs) well you know what was it like three years ago when we had to play the Yankees in the wild card and then you know, it has a yeah. one game wild card. Yeah, and we beat I them. I, I was yeah. I was I was, I was sitting okay. on the monster. Yeah, and we beat them. Remember Ooh. Bogey? Bogey had the home run right off the yeah. bat, the first inning and everything. Okay, right. Just in that one game, me pacing in my living room, I had over 13,000 steps. Oh, because I was just going back and forth, back and forth, like, oh Lord, and then I'm just there and I'm like Santa Maria, ordered, and here we go. I would have tripped you like 17 times. I would have tripped you walking by that. Yeah, my husband was like, what are you doing? I'm like, "Mm -mm, cats are down, standing up, and I'm doing my rituals and doing, and then if I stood up and they hit, oh, now I can't sit down. I got to stay standing because they hit. And then, you know, I'm like, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And my husband's just looking at me (laughs) like. that, That is how Christina stays slim. If right. you want to know, that's true. Know, <laughs> pacing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Let me tell you how many steps I got today. I got. <laughs> I got to look at my steps. Now you're making me count my steps. <laughs> not, not, not enough. Not enough. In that one game, I had over 13,000 steps just in that game, and my husband was Man. like, I was just. But <laughs> does it yeah. count if your heart rate? If you're just sitting there and your heart rate's like 170 watching these games, uh, my <laughs> watch thinks, my really watch thinks I'm doing some like aerobic activity. Yeah, no, I, I think you burn more out. calories because our heart is pumping even more. So yeah. you're the one. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. I can't stay yeah, still. So maybe I'm... just don't sit during games, and I will. I will be thin. That's the way to get thin. That's nice. Like, like, like it's called the Red Sox fan diet, and you just walk around nervously when you watch the game. I'm telling you, it works. I am living proof. <laughs> <laughs> in the off well, season, I get like this. In the season, I get. <laughs> so we have no way. She'll, we have she'll lose her off season pounds like in that first week. She's just yes. I, I, well, I you know think. what happens. You know what happens to me. I get really holy during the seasons. I'm like, oh, Lord, she's brave please, a lot. I've never asked you for anything in life. Just <laughs> make us work. She That's owes me. the Lord a lot. I do. I do. I have to go to church at least next week and maybe. Maybe. Yeah, we'll like, see. She's like, we'll see. she's like, 
dear God, if the red <laughs> I will go to church next week. I'm like, you better go to church then. <laughs> I better. That's true. That's true. Hey, damn yeah. right I go to church. I got my yeah, shirt. That, that, so that's one of my um that's my merch. Just saying if you want so, to check out. Don't be afraid to send me some merch. I'll, I'll wear it on the next one. Ooh, yeah. Okay, okay. I will send you. I, will, I can actually just like, I can either bring you some merch or send you some merch. Just well, we're, we're neighbors right now. You're yeah. at Framingham, so you're not too far away. We can make that work. Awesome. Hey, hey, that's true, man. <laughs> yeah, we'll do like photo op. It'll be okay. yes, yeah. perfect a video. Oh, and, and, the, and, and like the, I said, you can stop by the facility. I'll, I'll have you sign a waiver. I'll have you yeah. sign a waiver, and I'll throw to you. You know, <laughs> perfect. Just, make, perfect. Uh, you know, just in case. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. you guys more than welcome. All you guys to uh, stop by anytime. Oh, oh thank, thank you, thank you. I definitely love. I that, love so. <laughs> well, it's about that time that we oh, it's it. about we time. wrap it up, but it went fast. Because it did. Yeah. And, thank you. and I just have to say one more time, Manny, thank you so much for what you're doing for those kids. Cause I mean, yeah. that is just, it's wonderful. It's great. I just love the, I, that you're giving back and you're helping those kids. And that's just amazing. Cause yeah, they it, need it was, someone in their corner. Like I said, I, I was always like that when I played, uh, even while I was playing, it was just like, whatever they needed me to do, go from park to park in the city. Um, cause I know a lot of the kids, like, you know, the new generation is like, who is this guy? Like I'm old now, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, I definitely feel like we've made an impact and we continue growing every day. Uh, community wise, the Red Sox, the city of Boston itself sees what we're doing and hopefully continues to see because we are changing lives. We're not going to save them all because I hate how people say, you know, you save one, you did your job. There's so oh, no. many, so many kids yeah, so in, many. Any, in any city that needs help, families that need help. And, you know, we just want to be there for them. So. Yeah. Oh yes, yes, Manny. Thank you so much for it's what you perfect. do. Like I, oh, I love yeah. it when baseball players always give back to the community back. and what you're doing. Yes. Uh -huh. And especially like, like Christina said, for our kids, because this generation, our kids need something to look forward to. And if you know this is gonna motivate them and help them get good grades and just help them just uh -huh. you know do whatever they want to do in life. Thank you for always being there and supporting them. And I can't wait to go up there to Boston and see. Same, same, same. Yes, yeah. and just stay stay right. May get to Boston more than once a year. You know I, I mean? will. Yeah. 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 You guys put me. You guys put well, me. Well, now she can come to be there with me. <laughs> Yes, I'll stay with Mel. So. There you go. Manny, you can give us the website one more time. Uh, yes. It's uh, yes. baboston.org. Like I said, all the information is on there. But uh, baboston.org, and I just want to say thank you guys for having me. It's it's amazing. Thank you for coming. Uh, you know, we've been, me and Melissa have been texting back and forth a little bit, getting me pumped up for this. And, I mean, it was great. I mean, anything yeah. that we can do on our end, I love it. I mean, you guys were great, and hopefully, like I Thank said, you. next time I talk to you guys, we're in a new facility, bigger place, doing bigger things, <laughs> and changing more lives, right? So that's all. Yeah, awesome. Yes, definitely. perfect. That's definitely, all it's about. Definitely, definitely. So we will uh, end this, but just like, subscribe, share, all of that good stuff. Also, um, share the news about Manny's endeavors and um, and donate. That would be wonderful. Yes, donate. yes, that would be great. Um, I have a little, so we will say goodbye, go socks. but I'm going to, I have a little um, St. Patty's Day message from Red, my business partner, so I have a great, so I'm going to put that on right now, and you oh. may know, recognize somebody in the video, maybe. Yeah. Woohoo! Okay. Oh, okay. Go Sox! Oh, let's go see. Go Sox! Go 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 <laughs>